Welcome everyone to this Quintus Tech Talk. Today we're going to look into the very exciting field of transparent ceramics. Uh, with us to talk about this is Dr. Jens Klimke, a prominent researcher in the field of transparent ceramics. Hello, I'm Jens Klimke from Polycrystal Design in Germany. I've been involved in hot isostatic pressing of ceramics for more than 20 years. At Polycrystal, we've continued and completed the research that started at Fraunhofer Gesellschaft. Polycrystal offers different types of transparent oxide ceramics as well as colored ceramics. Dr. Klimp, can you please give us a short overview of the different applications for transparent ceramics? Yes, technical ceramics are known for their high hardness and temperature resistance. With transparency, a complete new property comes into play. Applications are optical windows for sensors, thermal shieldings, scintillators, scratch-resistant surfaces and decorative parts in watch industry and jewelry. So, thank you for that introduction. Uh, for the audience, could you please tell us the difference between glasses, transparent ceramics, polycrystalline transparent ceramics and, and single crystals? Yes, yeah, so it's a difficult question. You know, a glass is something like a, a molten liquid. It has an amorphous status of material. Whereas a single crystal is one grown crystal. It grows from the melted material. The polycrystal are several billions of very tiny crystallites which are baked together to one composite material. For a transparent polycrystal, it is most important that it is sintered without any porosity. We need less than 0.01% of porosity to make the material transparent. And this is a really challenging task. Other differences of the materials are the mechanical properties. For most single crystals, the mechanical properties differ in the directions of the orientation of the crystals. Whereas for the polycrystalline materials, the mechanical properties like toughness, fracture toughness and hardness are similar in, in, in every direction. The mechanical properties for glass are not as high as mechanical properties of single crystals and of polycrystals. Dr. Klimke, could you please uh, explain to us uh, the benefits of polycrystalline transparent ceramics in comparison to, to single crystals? Well, we think that there are many different uh, um, advantages. Uh, first of all, uh, it's the machinability of the polycrystals because uh, we can use ceramic technology and this enables uh, an easy shaping in contrast to single crystals uh, which are available in, in huge blocks and need machining with, with diamond and, and hard tools. But there are also other uh, advantages. One, for instance, is the lower energy consumption of the processing because single crystals uh, are produced uh, with, uh, with a molded material in a crucible, uh, whereas sintered material are sintered at lower temperatures. Because hardness is higher than sapphire, if we compare polycrystalline sapphire with a single crystalline sapphire, this is because of the specific microstructure of the material and becomes more and more important in, if you think about uh, electrical devices, electronic devices, mobile phones. Very good, thank you. I know that uh, you have been doing work on, on uh, 
precipitates or, or diffusion in, uh, in transparent ceramics. And uh, I'm asking you, uh, uh, when it comes to the possibility to do steered cooling in the hipping system, can you see any benefits uh, coming from that? Yes, yeah, so one of the most interesting topics is uh, the introduction of uh, dopants into the crystal lattice. You know, for a single crystal, there are some restrictions of doping the materials because the um, atoms has, need to be uh, introduced into the crystal lattice. And the, need uh, their, their space, their specific position in the crystal lattice. This is different to a polycrystal. We have more opportunities to introduce different dopants in the crystal lattice in a polycrystal because uh, the dopant can uh, stay uh, at the grain boundary or it can be replaced, it can replace other uh, atoms uh, in the crystal lattice. And another point, um, as, you, as you already mentioned, is that it's possible by uh, rapid cooling to uh, change the equilibrium of the, of the solubility of the dopants in the crystal. It, this process makes it possible to uh, introduce higher dopant levels in the, in the crystallites and enables new materials, new optical converters like laser crystals um, or luminescent materials. So looking to the future, what, what are the main goals for uh, you and the polycrystal design? In the last year we have developed about 100 different colors of ceramics. This is completely new. Uh, because it has a very high hardness and scratch resistant. It is possible to use these materials for many new um, ceramical uh, surfaces and, and technical parts. And we also would like to, to promote the transparent ceramics for more applications like uh, sensors or, or windows and go into production with hot isostatic pressing of these new materials. What are our edge from your point of view? Yes, Anders, in the application center Quintus has installed a gas monitoring system which allows to monitor the impurities during the complete thermal process. This is important to understand the correlation of processing parameters density and color change of ceramics during thermal processing. In another pro project, we were able to use the rapid cooling system to study a metastable state of ceramics. We think Quintus currently offers the most advanced HIP technology on the market with the best service. So thank you very much, Dr. Klimke, for your insights into the field of transparent ceramics. This has been very rewarding for me, and I'm sure it will be for also for our viewers. Thank you very much for this interesting talk, and we look forward for uh, cooperation with you in this interesting field of science.